vacation and you know they, they're traveling in their BMW and they're going around the Alps and I don't know if you've ever been to the French Alps but they're absolutely beautiful and they're windy twisted roads and they're just absolutely cool. and you buy 
side is a jumble puzzle and you're thinking oh great there's only 12 pieces and when you stop there's 15,000 pieces and you're like well, I didn't sign up for this it would take two countries um, three four five different um, investigative departments to never solve this crime they are still on this crime today now there are a couple um, of interesting things let's talk about um, the, the uh, actual wounded victims all the victims that were actually killed now the cyclist was killed with seven bullets which I think is a little bit overkill but he was just I mean, pulled it down. I mean, it was completely overkill. The other uh, three victims were not only shot in the bodies with a few bullets, but were then intentionally shot twice in the head to make sure they were dead. Um, so this killer was after them. I don't believe, I think this was, I mean, it sounds to me, and that's what the author said in both sources, that the, it sounded to him like, um, this was a professional hit. This person knew who they were, what he wanted, and he did the job. Now, um, okay, so, the mother of, uh, Mrs. Alhildi was murdered. The, the husband of Mrs. Elhildi, Mrs. Elhildi was murdered, but not the two children, which I find strange. I still find that very, very strange. And the more I read this, the stranger I think it is. So, now, as the police or stop and they are looking into this BMW um, and instead of seeing a family taking a peaceful nap on the side of the road there were three dead people now in one source it said well no both I'm sorry both sources say that the husband and wife were found in the car now, the mother-in-law to Mr. L.D. Zod, or the mother to Mrs. L.D., her body was found next to the cyclist out in a very remote part of the forest, which is kind of strange. She, too, though, had two bullets to the head and also bodily, but she was hit in the body as well. Now, that was interesting because the killer left the two, husband and wife, but then took the cyclist who he gunned down and the mother-in-law and drug their bodies into a why That is, I can't really come to any conclusion if you have some kind of, of uh, you know, response you'd like to put in the comments. I'd really appreciate that because I can't really figure out why she was actually put in uh, the, the you know, very remote part of the woods. I mean, why wouldn't she just be left in the car? There were no signs of her trying to get away. However, the car was believed to have been, you know, in motion when most of these bullets hit them. And to the point of where the car was still in reverse when the police arrived and the back of tires were spinning in through the loose gravel. So he had tried to back out and to get away from this crazed person or persons. Now, um, the detectives are absolutely baffled by this. And in one source it says the body of the the, um, the French cyclist was found a mile up the road. However, I found a little bit um, uh, more uh, re 
recent findings that the cyclist was actually um, being dragged by Mr. Illy. Uh, you know, he actually had, they feel like he was dead already. He was hit when um, driving and he actually hit the cyclist and pulled him underneath his car and drug him with him down the road. And then the killer, I don't know if the guy was still alive, but the killer then decides to put another few bullets into his body with a total of seven. So this is um, a very, uh, it gets interesting. So now we are on the side of the road. The eight-year-old, the four-year-old had been found. The seven-year-old was still alive. The children are alive. The husband and wife are dead. Her mother is dead. The cyclist is dead. Um, and the um, cyclist, his name was Sylvan Moliar. Now, the, how are these connected? I mean, you would think that the, you know, the cyclist would be connected to these people. I mean, if he was shot seven times, I think that's a lot of overkill for somebody just driving down the road. I mean, I understand he was struck underneath the car, but... I'm sure he wasn't conscious or, you know, even had the wherewithal to remember if there was somebody there and what he looked like. Um, but who knows? Uh, each, like I said, each victim had been shot twice in the head. Um, then the local police were called. The French municipal police were called. And then the Jardin, which is the National French Armed Forces. Then the Jardin joined and that is even a larger French um, police detective group. Um, kind of like we have the local police, then we have detectives, and then we have our, you know, army or, you know, NIS or FBI, you know. So now we've got basically all of France looking into this case. But it would not take long before these three powerful investigative forces realized that because of the family's connections to the Middle East, the dictator Saddam Hussein and their lines of work, multiple nationalities of these victims pushed this case to the edges of a bizarre and twisted, disturbing and unfortunate end to this young family and seemingly innocent cyclist. Maybe a passerby saw too much. It took two countries, resources, England and France, to investigate this horrific, horrific massacre. Let's talk about Saad, the husband. Now he was from Iraq and once upon a time worked as an engineer on top secret sensitive topics in Iraq their prior uh, then prior to his tragic murder worked for nuclear and satellite technology in England so a satellite and nuclear technology and deep ties with Iraq is in itself enough as a cause to have this poor family slaughtered. But they dug deeper into Zod's roots and the family. And they became very, very, very suspicious. Surrounding Zod's brother Zod and father, they became very quickly, um, Two people that were um, considered um, suspects right away, very quickly, because accusations that almost a million dollars or 840,000 pounds had been moved into a Swiss bank account in Sud's father's name by the 
regime of Saddam Hussein. Saad thought to have access not only to this money, this almost million dollars, but to Saddam Hussein's bank accounts in general. So he was, um, that to me would make me very nervous. I wouldn't want any kind of uh, connection to that. Um, I wouldn't want any connection to anybody's bank account except for my own, but let alone a ruthless ruler like Saddam Hussein. Had been. Now fuel feeds the fire. Zod's brother had stated a, a feud based on. It started. I'm sorry. A feud based on a family inheritance issue. This discovery set ablaze the theory that this was a hit on the family to obtain this money. I mean, people have been killed for less. Let's face it. Saad was arrested in 2013, yet released in lack, with lack of evidence. Even though he had lack of evidence, and they could have kept him based upon it, that he had committed fraud by altering his father's will, to this day he is still thought to be involved. However, uh, there is no under there is no hard proof. There really isn't, and he is a free man. Now, what I also found very strange is that the father, I couldn't really find any information, and I read articles and articles on this. Once I found this case, I was so intrigued that, um, you know, since 2012, that that all these countries are looking for these this killer, and nobody saw anything, nobody can find anything, nobody can, you know, connect anything to these people. Um... Let's talk about the cyclist, because there is kind of, kind of a strange connection. Sorry, I'm uncomfortable. Sullivan, uh, Sullivan, I'm sorry, Sullivan Moyer. Odd, so very coincidental, which I rarely believe in coincidences. This French cyclist assassinated, um, not far from the family or with the family. Bizarrely enough, was also in the nuclear industry. So when I read that, you know, all kinds of bells are going off in my head, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, there you go. But no. As the puzzle grows bigger, and you know, instead of coming together, like I said, this is a family murder by happenstance when the intended target was a cyclist, or vice versa, or were there, or were they both connected? So, the puzzle pieces kind of get shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and more people started to come about as suspects and more crazy things started to appear that just didn't... I mean, I understand there's coincidences, but this, there's too many coincidences in this. Just way too many coincidences. Um, Molyar discovered to be a welder. So, with no access or knowledge that would endanger his life, it was, um, seemed to be a wrong place, wrong time scenario for the innocent man out for a pleasure ride, enjoying the immensely beautiful, um, sights of the French Alps. Now, there was, and still, uh, is a theory that there was a serial killer which kind of came to my head at first, however, it was too specific. A serial killer, you know, doesn't really hunt down people in the middle of nowhere from, you know, a you know, from thousands and thousands of miles away from their home and then, then killed, like, I mean, it just didn't really fit his, a serial killer's profile. And I don't think the police thought that as well. Or either. Um, it was like, um, it was a very far-fetched theory due to the evidence that pointed to a more plausible reason for the senseless murders. However, in
2012, a similar killing of a tourist, yet that was decided to be the most inconclu inconclusive. So in 2012, the same year, there was a similar killing of a tourist. However, it wasn't done in the same fashion, and um, it, it was kind of in that area, but, um, they, you know, they didn't really have the same MO as what happened to this family. Um, now, there was a mystery motorcyclist that people saw, um, and they soon theorized a strange man had been in the vicinity, which could have very well been the shooter. During the murders, he might be the killer. However, he was quickly ruled out in 2015. So, the Légionnaire, an ex-soldier, a French foreign legion, was under suspicion for unknown reasons, unknown, and no evidence to point him to the murders. But oddly enough, this man, another strange piece to this puzzle, because this man, this legionnaire, kills himself as soon as he realizes that the, he is under an accusations, that the accusations have come onto him and he is okay so <clears throat> now the legionnaire uh he was an ex-soldier for the french legion he was um under suspicion for unknown reasons there wasn't any evidence even pointing to him i'm not sure why he was even a considered a suspect However, he does something very strange. He commits suicide almost immediately, immediately after the accusation come to his doorstep. It seemed to be more of a grudge the prosecutor had on this man rather than the evidentiary findings of the police. The French police said no evidence ever pointed to him. So that's really sad because he entered his life feeling that he was going to be accused of this no matter what, or he could possibly have been involved. And I think in some ways, because this, this was such a, you know, with the connection to Saddam Hussein and what you're going to find out next, I just think that uh, somewhere, someone in the government of either the UN, France, England, somebody had to have connections or knew of this going on as, you know, or is going to take place somehow. I maybe felt guilty. I don't know. I'm just surmising this. So, uh, you know, just from what I'm reading. Now, this is the most, probably the most interesting part of this whole story. The wife, Ipidol. The initial evidence pointed to the husband, Saad. And his family um, ties to Iraq, regime of Saddam Hussein. And of course, having all of that money, you know, tied up and you know access to it, right there would give anybody, you know, a reason to murder if especially if he was not giving it back or he was using too much of it. However, the deeper the investigative departments looked into the wife's life, they found that there was a deep, dark secret lurking in her past that would lead to one more death. And this is even more bizarre than anything I have said yet. She was secretly married to an ex-American cop in 1999 um, for her green card. Now, the cop had no problem with this. They were good friends. 
friends, it was a platonic relationship, or at least that's what it said, um, but nobody in her family knew, not her mother, not her father, nobody, not her, you know, if she had brothers, nobody in her family knew, and, it's, and she was a dentist, actually, she was a dentist in, um, the country she was originally from, which I'm assuming is Iraq, Iran, yeah, Iraq, so, <clears throat> Here, she is a dentist in Iraq, which many people are, and they come over to the United States and they get credited. But here's the weird part. She marries this man to get her green card, so she's able to get her dentist license in the United States. And she comes alone. She comes without a family. She comes with nothing. And she also does not use her real name. Now, um, I don't know what the laws are in other countries, but I'm pretty sure the United States makes you use your birth given name, not a made up name, if you're going to complete any certification or board cert uh, certified, uh, especially for the medical or to be an attorney or dentist, any, you know, anything. Um, and she used the name Kelly. So instead of going by her real name, she married this man as Kelly. Now, sorry. So she had been secretly married in 1999. Not even his family knew. Nobody knew about this marriage or the fact. And her husband or kids had not known either. She didn't even tell her husband. Or the fact that this Jim Thompson was the ex cop in America that married her never stopped loving her. And he and he never got remarried. He never got with anybody else. Matter of fact, um, so she was Kelly in America, and all of a sudden, one day, um, they're driving down the street, she gets a phone call that says, um, your license will not be recognized in the United States ever, no matter what you do. So, she has him drive him to the airport, and she gets on a plane, and immediately leaves, goes back to wherever she came from, and she starts living, she starts being a dentist again in, I guess, Iraq, and no, she never tells anybody, not does she talk to this Jim Thompson again, well, she said she only talked to him one other time, and that was, um, back, uh, in 2003, when she actually called him to, uh, as for a divorce, which he obliged, no problem, he gave it to her uh, when she had fallen in love with Saad and uh, uh, um, uh, Hildy, and uh, he had no problem with that. Yet, according to records, this was not a legal divorce, and by all accounts, she was living with Sadat as a bigamist for nine years. Now, to her defense, she did not realize that she was, um, you know, living as a bigamist. Uh, apparently, I, I, I don't know if this divorce was, if it was, the marriage must have been legal. However, the divorce apparently was not for some reason. But here's what happens. Jim's sister, Mrs. Weatherly, received a call from Jim two weeks Two weeks, two, 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 two weeks before the strange and oddly linked horrific event would occur. She was told if anything happened to him, she was instructed to go to his room and there would be something surprising. Well, the exact moment, now this is so bizarre. The exact moment, the exact time, seven hours, obviously, earlier, 
Agent, like I said before, 
posing as a dentist. That's why she never got her dentist license. She couldn't. The U.S. said, one day, boom. Sorry, you cannot have your license back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, and she just takes off and goes to the airport and leaves this poor man and is still in love with her to vent for himself. Very, 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 very strange. So, undercover agents posing as a dentist. Maybe she was. The brother sighed and father had had to kill Jim because if he found out she knew too much, it would put their family at risk. And I want to go back to the two girls. Now, they were related to those two girls. They were not killed. And something strikes me kind of oddly about the daughter, um, Zena, underneath her mother's legs for eight hours. It's almost, I feel like, that she was told to stay there by somebody that she knew and trusted. Or why else wouldn't she come back or come out when the cops got there? was really, that, that just feels really strange to me. So, so nobody would, uh, the, was murdered and nobody, and he was never pursued and the, and revealed the deep, deeply hidden secret he shared with Iqbal many years prior because they still spoke. Remember, I said before, they said they only spoke once. Well, they actually still spoke quite frequently, and he obviously loved her very much, which would give Iqbal, or Iqbal's husband, Saad, and his brother and father, uh, definitely his brother and father, a reason to get rid of him as well, because if he still loved her, he would not stop until, and, you know, maybe they thought he knew something that he shouldn't have known as well. But if he loved her, he would not stop until he would find her killer. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments what do you think. I am really curious. A perplexing, twisted tale with so many possible truths, yet only one truth exists. Like I say in all my videos, there's his or truth, her truth, and the truth. Unfortunately, we will, no, we probably will never know. I, I think it goes above our heads. I think it goes above just, you know, the brother and the father. I think it goes even deeper into the government than that of not just one, but a few governments covering something up. This is still unsolved left as a complex multinational connection leading the investigator crime board into a tightly spun web of dangerous connections like lies, secrets, and greed that led to absolutely nowhere. This is too odd, too odd of a twist to this case. The kids were unharmed except for a simple a single shot into one of the child's shoulders, which could have ricocheted off of the car from a straight bullet. Um, because it was never said that she was actually attacked, then said was she was shot in the shoulder. However, 21 to 25 bullets, 17 hitting the victims. It is very <coughs> possible that, that uh, she was hit by a straight bullet. And in one account said she was hit in the head as well. I, you know, I cannot, I am just really going by Jack Rosewood because he is a, a very good tr a cr true crime writer. And not that the second, um, not that the second, uh, or third resource was, uh, and not, uh, uh, as good, but I really find that books, when I'm reading it, online. Things can be changed. Things can be altered. It's kind of like too quick of a, uh, too quick of news, you know. Um, you know, things can be said. Things can be exaggerated. But when
when a true crime writer writes a story, it's it's a very well thought out process, a very well researched process. Um, you know, it's it's not really one sided like the David Chris um, side uh, book that I was reading was saying that these investigative reporters again posting in a, the quick news the news of the day practically made him into such a, a monster so let's see <clears throat> sorry my stomach so the kids are both alive and since this was such an intentional murder the killer the killer had to have known the children were there that's another thing there's no way that because it was such a specific they were all together they were all going on you know holiday and yet if it was if it was a serial killer um, you would think because obviously the one of the or two of the girls saw the man's face he would they would have been dead too and the one under the mom's legs almost as if she was told like I said before, to crawl under there and not to get hit or to move. Um, and my my guess is that it, it kind of appears since the other girl was found right outside the car that she was actually told to get out of the car and sit beside the car so she would also not be further injured. So...
as well. <laughs> um, she is in the middle of painting her room and decided she was going to start yesterday right in the middle of my video and just needed my help today. <laughs> Let's just say that.
missing is when my parents, like my mom, really started to watch those true crime shows and uh, that's what we did together um, every time I went over to their house and up until the day she died. So, um, I am a true crime prof. I love, 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 love doing these videos and I hope you enjoy them. I hope you get some tingles and I hope you get some, just a time for yourself where you can listen to true crime in not such an abrasive way or loud way. Enjoy.